three, two, one. Really? Three, two, one. Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and welcome back to the Path to the Bismarck. Next up we have a tier four battleship for the Germans, the Koenig or Koenig. Not sure which, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. Now we've already gone over the builds for the uh, previous, uh, for the free to play guys. So I appreciate you guys taking a watch. If you haven't seen those builds, go back to the uh, Kaiser video. I had a 20 minute intro to that, so there's plenty for you guys to see. But in this one, we're just going to showcase our actual build that we're using. Uh, we're running Henry J. Hyde, we're running Andrew Cunningham, and Franz von Hipper. We are also running Flamble Cannoneer, Aladad, Marksmanship, and Master Mechanic with the uh, legendary perk Fight Fire with Fire. Okay? Now, obviously, like I said, if you guys don't know, you can run either Otto Ciliax or Franz von Hipper as well. I know some people were talking about Scharnhorst uh, and running it. Personally, I wouldn't, but, you know, that's just me. You do, you do get some uh, dispersion buffs with Scharnhorst, and you can run Andrew Cunningham and Franz von Hipper on this as well. Uh, but you get uh, damage control party reload, uh, porcupine, firefighter, or firefighter, and master mechanic, which is all good, but you don't get the accuracy buffs that you get with the Henry Hyde build, okay? Uh, this is more of a uh, tank build slash secondary build, but you do get a little bit of accuracy with the base trait, okay? But you also get will to rebuild, just like you do on Auto Ciliax and Franz von Hibbert. So, uh, that is a big bonus. Uh, because we're using hide, we don't get will to rebuild, so that's why I go with fight fire with fire. But uh, anyway, back to the thing. Here is our build. We are running aiming systems mod one, no surprise there. We are fully upgraded. Uh, the loadout, we are running community contributor flag and a uh, stage two camo or type two camo. Uh, that gives you the four and a half percent incoming fire dispersion. I don't really care to have a slow or a lower concealment because I'm always firing my guns anyway. So I'm going to be spotted. I don't care about that. But having at least that four and a half percent dispersion debuff on the enemies is helpful. Really helpful. Uh, plus, you can see we continue that five heal trend. And we're going to use every one of those in this match. So uh, keep that in mind. We are also running the secondary targeting consumable. All right, so survivability, 49,640 hit points. Uh, you got a 22% torpedo reduction, again, showing that you don't really have very good torpedo protection in the German battleships. Artillery, you have 305 millimeter 50 caliber guns that reach out to 16.6 kilometers with this build and reload in 26 seconds, which is nice. 180 degree turn time, still horrendous. The, the 180 degree turn time on these things are bad. HE shell maximum damage 3,500 with a 23% chance to set fire, and the AP shell maximum damage of 8,100. You've got 105 millimeter uh, secondaries. You've got eight of those that reach out to 5.4 kilometers and reload in just 3.3 seconds. Then you have the 150 millimeter secondaries. You have 14 of those, and those reach out to 5.4 kilometers as well and do er, reload in 8.6 seconds. And they shoot AP for a maximum damage of 3,700, okay? Armor. Now, as is the trend with most of the German battleships, you do have pretty solid armor. So uh, on the bow, you can see at the belt, once again, you've got 135 millimeter belts right there that goes all the way up to the bow. Technically, it does not go through the bow, so you could potentially squeeze a shell through that little gap right there in the front, but it's not likely. You're probably going to hit either side of that and bounce. So if you do have to shoot at the bow of one of these, shoot high. Try to aim for those guns and maybe you'll hit the bow itself and go through that deck. Much thinner armor that you can overmatch. All right. And then, of course, the uh, belt armor on these things is ridiculous. As we saw there. Um, what is it? 200 millimeters to 270 millimeters. So pretty, pretty disgusting. And then the Citadel pretty hard to hit unless you're uh, at range 
okay? And that is a theme with the, the German battleships as well. Up close, you're probably not going to hit the, the citadel of one of these. At range, you have a better shot. All right, so let's look at the overview. Ironclad, above average armor thickness. We already talked about that. Superior AP shell damage. Once again, it's got very good AP damage, but the AP itself, not the greatest in the world. That's why we use the Aladad for that extra penetration angle. And then modest guns. This ship is armed with low caliber main batteries. Uh, Koenig, the warship, or the warship was developed from the Kaiser class battleships, and she inherited her predecessor's very powerful armor. The main turrets were arranged in a more rational manner that allowed the ship to fire a broadside with all of her main battery guns. She entered service in 1914, and there were four of them in the series. So let's take a look at her. Again, very nice looking battleship. I, I don't hate on the German. Oh god, we had some lag spike there. Good lord. Frame drops and ports are back. I hear I thought they may have fixed it. But uh, no. It's, it's a good looking ship. I actually enjoy the, the uh, Koenig quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's one of those ships that I don't mind playing up against people. You know what I'm saying? When you're up tiered. When you're in a uh, tier 4 and you're up against tier 5s. I don't mind that at all. So with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we are on north and we're in the Koenig. And we're bottom tier. And I'm going to try my best to showcase as much as I can about this ship. Both the goods, the bads, and why some people lose a lot of matches. Alright, so let's get into this. Now, first of all, I'm going to give a shout out to my team. My team did everything correct in this one. Can't argue with them. Uh, I, I say that not everybody did everything correct, but we'll get into that as we as we see it. But uh, first of all, there is a destroyer that spawned on Alpha with the other destroyer. He's going to be talking in chat. I don't know if he's going to. I hope he doesn't come through the actual gameplay footage here. If he does, maybe I'll have to uh, listen in and, and remove that if I can, or at least turn it down so that it's not distracting. Uh, but the dude was communicating, even though I wasn't communi communicating back until the very end of the match. I generally don't play with my headset on because I tend to, you guys know, get upset. <laughs> so I, I generally don't play with my headset on unless I'm in a party with somebody. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to push towards the Bravo cap for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to allow me to get crossfires. And two gonna allow me to get a uh, position that I can defend for a long time if need be okay um, you can see the I want to say it's an Icarus but it may be the one after Icarus um, I honestly don't remember uh, it's an Acasta there you go <laughs> I was like I can't remember but no it's it's an Acasta so OPSEC if you're out there appreciate you man uh, glad to have you on my team. You did everything that we needed you to do in this one, uh, with one exception. So if you are watching, I'm gonna critique you just a just a little bit. All right. So uh, yeah, he's gonna come over here. He's gonna get into Bravo immediately. Now I'm spotted, which means I know there's a destroyer here. Why did I know that? Because the battleship was behind the island when I fired, meaning he wouldn't have spotted me. Right, now, is it possible that one end of the guys on the left side spotted me? Absolutely, but it wasn't. It was the destroyer. Farragut coming in. He throws a smoke, but he's going too fast, so he can't slow down and disappear. You can see the, the rotation of the guns really screwing with me here. The, the ship turns really well, but other than that, doesn't really give us a whole lot in terms of uh, uh, getting the guns on target. Now, it just occurred to me that I may have missed a few stats in the... Um, the oh, the lead up to this so i apologize about that um maybe i'll go back and I'll, I'll redo the intro i don't know uh it'll be up to it'll be up to me it probably isn't going to get redone though so i apologize uh for those of you who are looking forward to all the other stats i think i completely forgot like half the stats <laughs> so uh i apologize but uh yeah we we get some shots early on against this New Mexico. He's he's just sitting there broadside. We're angled relatively well. Of course, Peter Veliki out there decides to come in spamming HE, and that sucks. Now I know there's a Farragut right here, but I wasn't expecting these torpedoes. Even though I knew that there was a Farragut there, these torps caught me off guard. He gets me with two of them, causes flooding. I have to put the flood out, and I'm not even joking. Like. 
we, you see how long we have? Eight seconds left on the damage con, right? Watch this. Four, three, two. We get a very good hit there on the New Mexico, taking us up to 18,000. Our damage con expires, which means we are officially on cooldown, and what happens? Immediately a double fire by the Peter Veliki. Go figure. Am I right? Like, come on. Really, game? Now, I kind of run aground here, but I was kind of planning on it as well. well Farragut gets, sure gets spotted. Nice. We're going to go ahead and take the main guns at him, take most of his health, and then we're going to pop that secondary uh, booster to try to finish him off real quick. And you'll see that these secondaries are pretty nasty. Immediately nice. ending that man's career. Uh, much to the delight of our destroyer, who was trying to torp him rather than just shooting him with his guns. So, again, a little bit of a critique here for that destroyer player. But other than that, he plays a really good game, and I can't complain about it. But he, he came into the base and knew there was a destroyer there, and when he first came in, he said he was going to screen for the two battleships at Bravo. To me, screening means putting yourself between the known destroyer and the battleships so that you can spot torpedoes. Okay, that's what screening is. That isn't what he did. What he did was find a destroyer who immediately smoked up, and then he blew his smoke and just sat there. Uh, that's not preferable, okay? So that is the only only critique I have for the man is uh, if you are intending to screen for your battleships, go into the, the base, spot that destroyer, let him smoke up, and then go up towards the smoke and spot him, and I can help you get rid of him. Uh, I shot him initially when he went into the smoke, and I was just waiting to shoot him again. Um, so just one of those things. Now, we take a shot at the Queen Elizabeth at range, and you can see on the map, this is where I'm starting to see what's going on. Their team ran away from Charlie. Our team has Charlie and Bravo. We have the cap advantage. We have all of the advantage with the exception of it's just me and two other battleships here to take on all of these enemies. We have, what, three enemy battleships and a heavy cruiser, plus there's two more enemy battleships off to my uh, aft right now. So I've got to be very, very careful. Now, Acasta gets spotted at long range. We take the shot. We absolutely punish him for uh, 2,500 damage, which is a good chunk off of him. That's a, that's a solid chunk. Not quite a third of his health, but a good chunk off of him. And at range, you can't ask for much more than that. Now, my teammates in this are going to go run into this mess of battleships and die. Our, crew, our New York that was with us this whole time immediately did. Like, he just went in there, sailed broadside, and died. Uh, we get hit from the uh, New Mexico behind me. And this is where I start to do kiting, okay? Kiting, kiting, kiting. Now, when, do, when does kiting work, folks? Kiting is only viable if you let it be viable. If you chase a kite, you will lose the match, okay? This is a domination. Oh, hello, Hawkins. It's fancy you trying to shoot me out there, but uh, you can see I'm, I'm looking at the Texas who's closer, and then I'm like, you know what? I think I can hit this man. So we aim, and is our aim true, folks? Wait for it. Pow! <laughs> yes, our aim is true. Double Citadel. The man's lucky to still be alive after that hit. Let's be real. He's very lucky. That was a very good, nice salvo from a German battleship. Like, he's very, very lucky to still be alive. But, he is still alive, and we are still kiting. Now, notice I'm not kiting flat away from anything. I'm literally keeping my guns at play. I'm going to try to shoot this Hawkins again. You can see I fire the rear guns. I'm trying to get the middle gun. There goes the middle gun and maybe the front guns. I'm trying to get everything on, on target as best we can. And we do reach out and touch this, this Hawkins. And that's going to take away his will to fight. Like, he has lost enough health at this point that he just doesn't want to fight anything anymore. So he's going to stay at stupid range and be completely useless to his team for the rest of the match. Texas is going to get some pretty solid hits on me, and we're going to try to return the favor. He's, he's pretty well angled to me, and we got pretty small guns, so I'm not looking for a lot of damage. But I am going to start whittling him away. We're aiming high, trying to get some of those penetrations through the upper bow side plating and deck slash superstructure of the American battleship, trying to avoid hitting that belt that we know will ricochet shells and shatter shells. Uh, that's Zyop out there. Apparently he watches the channel, so right, much appreciated to uh, Zyop. Big shout out. Uh, but he's actually doing the right thing by pushing my team rather than chasing me initially. Uh, but that being said, 
he's also going to fall into the trap of shooting at me and uh, trying to get rid of me. Now, having five heals on a battleship, I can survive a lot of crap if I have time to use them. If everybody focuses me at once, it's a different story. Or if I screw up uh, and potentially run into an island and get myself broadsided by Queen Elizabeth and a uh, another Koenig later in this match, you know, foreshadowing, maybe. I don't know. But we take the shot at the Acast, and for whatever reason, this shot wasn't even close. Wasn't even close. It split both sides of his ship, and it's just like, nope, not happening. And that's where Zyop actually just smashed me through the back of my ship. But he gets smashed right back by my teammates. Now, my, my teammates at Bravo right now are about to do the wrong thing. I'm about to have to start kiting uh, back in towards the team a little bit, because I want my teammates to be focused a little more. But they are actually going to put themselves in position to be taken out one by one. And it, inevitably, that's going to potentially cost us this match. So we've got to be careful. Uh, I get set on fire by the destroyer and immediately hit by Zyop again. So we have to damage Khan because I can't afford to take any more damage. All right. So we, we force the damage con now. This Acasta needs to die. And you can see I'm starting to get upset that nobody's shooting this destroyer that's lit up when they are definitely close enough to shoot him. If this man gets another fire on me right now, I'm dead. I take the shot. We reach out. We touch him. Only get 1,600 out of it. Really unfortunate. And you can see I'm starting to turn in, hopefully to get some more, more shells on him. But uh, that's when the teammates finally decide to start shooting him. Finally, there's a cruiser there. He's opening up on the, the destroyer. The battleship's right next to the destroyer, for God's sakes. And, of course, Queen Elizabeth manages to take him down. Thank you. So, torp threat gone. We can focus on the enemy Conic and the enemy Queen Elizabeth. Both of these guys have all their health because they haven't really been in a fight up to this point. They've kept their distance, let that uh, enemy... Uh, oh, what do you call it? The enemy Texas take all of the hits while they were sitting at range. Again, something that could potentially cost your team the game. You're, the, the Queen Elizabeth is a very good battleship. I've showcased it many a time. Uh, so, I am not taking any... I'm not cutting any slack to the Queen Elizabeth player here. That Queen Elizabeth player should have pushed harder than he did. And he would have been able to do a lot more for his team. Now, notice our destroyer. Our destroyer is not directly engaging these battleships anymore. He managed to take out Zyop, and uh, because of that, he's able to break off and go for the base cap to secure the win. We've got the win in the bag at this point. We're up to 100,000 damage, by the way, in case you didn't notice. We have 650 points to their 400 points, okay? The only way they win this right now is by killing all of us. Now, I'm not going to lie. I get into a bit of a... Uh, bad place here because I'm trying to turn my guns all the way back out to get into a turning fight with this Conic uh, because I, I believe that I can take him out. I, re I really do. I believe if it's me versus this Conic, I will win this fight. Uh, that's just the way I, I play. Like I, I have a feeling in a battleship 1v1 versus most people, I'm going to be the better player. Okay? That's just, you know, call it arrogance, whatever you want to call it, but it's just the facts. I generally, 1v1, don't have a problem with pretty much any other battleship. But uh, we take a shot here, and you can see the, the RNG is just not on our side. We managed to hit a sec, or we hit the side plating and, and ricochet. He's pretty Still well pretty angled flooding. to us, but we're just going to keep shooting at him, hoping to get some penetrations. And I probably should have went after some HE at this point. There's no... There's no uh, downside to using the HE here other than if the guy decides to go broadside and I'm shooting HE I'm not going to get as much damage as I could have but given that his angle to me currently I probably should have loaded HE and started to whittle him down like that but instead we're keeping with the AP and I have run aground because I'm a potato uh, I was driving do I was using the map to drive and you can see they just finished off my last battleship here in like a couple of seconds and that means all eyes are on me and that's not preferable, especially when you just ran aground and you're backing up slowly. Now again, I know that this is probably the end for me. We've got 10,000 hit points, no more heals. This is pretty much it. So I'm going to try to take as much health off these guys as possible. The Queen Elizabeth is the biggest threat to me because of the 15-inch uh, guns. 
and he also has my flat broadside to shoot at currently. So I'm trying to angle against him, which is why I'm continuing to reverse and also angle against the Koenig. And the Koenig is actually not going to do a whole lot of damage to us here. He's going to get a penetration here and there, but uh, we're going to get the better end of the bargain most of the time. And you can see he gets the front gun off and just one, one gun. These are two shells coming through. Boom! Immediately cuts my health in half. <laughs> one shell. So you got to love it. Uh, but that's, that's the problem with this. I have run out of room to kite away. Okay, this is my last stand. And I'm almost getting him, but no, I couldn't get my guns turned back on him. Couldn't ricochet the shells. He manages to get enough penetrations to finish me off. And you can see our Acasta back in chat talking. Like I said, he, he did a pretty good job of talking to uh, the entire game and telling people what he was anticipating doing. So uh, much appreciated to OPSEC once again. Uh, and it's at this point that I decided to throw my headset on and just tell everybody, hey guys, you got the guaranteed win. I have kited. These guys are so far away from the match, they can't do anything. All you have to do is live. You got one minute. One minute! And all you have to do is live. You don't have to do anything. Uh, so, it's at this point that me and OPSEC start getting into a conversation about, yeah, the winning is better than, than uh, taking the chance. And uh, he's, he's a pretty cool guy, by the way. Uh, once I actually got into chat and started talking to him, it was pretty good. But uh, yeah, we managed to, to pull this off, guys. Yes, that battleship's rushing in there. I think he is actually going to be able to kill the Queen Elizabeth here. And uh, that's going to leave us um, in a pretty good spot. Guaranteed win. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This was a little bit different. Again, sorry for the intro. I kind of goobered that up. Uh, but, you know, it happens sometimes. But I still think that this shows the ship pretty well. And I hope you guys enjoy now, unfortunately for me, this means that this is the last... It only took me two matches to get the match that I wanted to showcase to you guys, by the way. I love the I love both the, uh, the lower tier Germans. It's starting at the Bayern and up that I start to get frustrated with them. Not that they're bad chips, it's just they're frustrating to play for me, personally. But, uh, yeah. 116,000 damage in a tier 4 versus tier 5s. Top of the leaderboard, 2100 base XP, several medals. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.